Hey everyone, it is super late and I just finished streaming the Tesla uh, event on Twitch and then went for way longer than I probably should have uh, afterward just, you know, going back and forth with people in chat and talking about EVs and the channel and different video ideas and all that kind of stuff. So uh, for those of you who tuned into the stream, um, thank you very, very much, uh, especially those who are participating in chat. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I know the stream was a little rough around the edges, but you know, this, uh, this is kind of a new thing for me to be doing. So, you know. Anyway, I know what you're here for, so let's just get right down to it. The Tesla live stream for this event was, well, brief, and the whole first portion of the live stream was dedicated to talking, well, about the company and about the brand and what the brand stands for. It felt a lot like uh, they were trying to familiarize people with Tesla as the brand, expecting uh, a lot of the viewers to be unfamiliar with Tesla, which kind of makes sense given that the goal of this event uh, was to deliver a broader market vehicle and essentially launch the broader market vehicle, which is going to bring a lot of people um, <clears throat> into the brand. Um, who, you know, may not be that familiar with it. So a lot of time was spent on that. They also talked about uh, the advantages of EVs and, and that sort of thing. So basic stuff that, you know, most of my normal audience already knows and is very familiar with. Beyond that, the stream was actually really short on details. I was expecting all sorts of details about the car and configuration options and stuff to be revealed, uh, which has happened in the past to some extent. Um, but this time around, we got a lot of Elon reassuring everyone, yeah, we're gonna make a bunch of these cars and we'll make them as quick as we can. And, you know, here's one slide with the basic information about the two uh, configurations of the Model 3 will be that they would be offering initially. One slide. The majority of the rest of the information about the Model 3 actually came from uh, various news articles that were posted online um, just after the event that apparently pulled information from a press release. So here are the details. Initially, there will be two variants of the Tesla Model 3. Uh, the first variant is what Elon referred to as the standard version, which will have a base cost of $35,000, a 220-mile range, 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds, a top speed of 130 miles per hour, uh, will be capable of replenishing 130 miles of range in 30 minutes at a supercharger, um, and 30 miles of range per hour when charging via 240 volt at home. So it'll have a 32 amp onboard charger, and availability starts in the fall of 2017. The second configuration available will be the long range version, which according to the one slide that Elon had up, will have a base cost of $44,000, a range of 310 miles, 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds, a top speed of 140 miles per hour, um, the ability to replenish 170 miles of range in 30 minutes at a supercharger, uh, and 37 miles of range per hour uh, using 240 volt home charging, so it has a 40 amp onboard charger. Availability for this version is pretty much immediate because that's what they were delivering at tonight's event. Despite the presentation itself being a little disappointing in its lack of details, those base specs are really good. Now there are a lot more tidbits in the base specs um, and information about the options and stuff that have come out via the, the uh, previously mentioned press release. So if you want to see like a complete drill down on all of that, uh, check the description below. Uh, we'll post a link to an article that went up on Electric uh, that has pretty much everything. But I'll go over some of the highlights real quick. First up, keys, key fob, and entry into the vehicle. There were a lot of rumors surrounding uh, the Model 3 when it came to, you know, whether there would or wouldn't be a key fob or what the deal would be there. And it turns out, again, based on information that came out after the event, uh, that Tesla is doing away with key fobs for the Model 3. Instead, you will access the car uh, via a phone app, uh, the idea being that the phone app would connect with the car as you approach the vehicle, unlock the vehicle, and activate it, much like the key fob currently does. Um, and the car will also come with a backup card, uh, that's an RFID card that you can use in the event that, you know, your phone isn't working, or you lost it, or your battery's dead, or whatever. You just pull the RFID card out, swipe it against the B-pillar to unlock to get in, and then there's another area that you'd swipe between the front seats uh, to turn the vehicle on. Another important detail that in some ways is a bit of a change from the Model S is the warranty. The Model 3 will come with a standard four-year, 50,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty, just like the Model S and the Model X. However, the battery warranty is a little bit different. It's eight years, 100,000 miles, 
for the standard version of the Model 3, and 8 years or 120,000 miles for the long range version of the Model 3. This differs from the Model S and the X in that the S and the X have an 8 year unlimited mile powertrain and battery warranty. Some of the highlights from the standard features list include navigation, hey that's a big deal, rear backup camera, dual zone climate control, streaming radio, voice commands, folding rear seats, LED exterior lighting, collision avoidance, and automatic emergency braking. Again, the complete list can be found at the link in the description below. Options, option bundling, and pricing, well, that's where things get kind of interesting. As far as colors, Black paint is standard, everything else costs a thousand bucks. 18 inch aero wheels are standard, so I guess the rumors about them being aero covers may not be the case. They might actually just be aero wheels now. The upgraded 19 inch sport wheels on the other hand are $1,500. One effective option bundling that people may not be too happy about is the premium upgrade package, which costs $5,000 and kind of includes all of the things you'd want anyway, but you know, if you don't want some of the items, too bad. So the premium upgrade package covers things like upgraded interior materials, heated seating, wood decor, rear USB ports, power seats, driver profiles, power adjustable steering column, premium audio, the all glass roof, auto dimming side mirrors, a center console, and LED fog lamps. That's a whole lot of features to cram into one $5,000 package. And looking at the list myself, you know, I see things on there that I don't, really want, but you know, if you want nicer seats, or you want power seats, or you want driver profiles, then well, you know, you gotta get all of it and it's $5,000. Beyond the premium upgrades package, you have enhanced autopilot and full self-driving packages. They're split in two, just like they are currently with the Model S and Model X, and well, this may be concerning to some, but the pricing is exactly the same. It's $5,000 for enhanced autopilot, which gives you tack, and auto steer and lane change and all that goodness, and $3,000 for the what will be the future uh, full self-driving. $8,000 for the two of them sounds like a really big ask for a car that has a $35,000 base price, um, but whether they're really worth that or not together, I think will depend on what Tesla ultimately is able to accomplish with the system. The good news for the more enthusiast-minded of us is that Tesla did not cheap out on the suspension setup for this car, opting for front double wishbone suspension and rear multi-link. So hopefully that'll help provide for a dynamic, fun, enjoyable car to drive while we wait for our future robot overlords to ferry us around. The Model 3 is also significantly lighter than the Model S, coming in at 3,549 pounds in base configuration, and 3,814 pounds in the long range version before options and stuff are added. I did find it strange that Elon didn't talk at all about the actual battery pack capacity for either version of the Model 3, so we're at least temporarily gonna have to guess about that. Get on that, TMC. But an argument could be made for not talking about battery capacity when it relates to the Model 3, because, well, ultimately, it's the range that matters, and it may cause people to draw more comparison between the Model 3 and the Model S than Tesla really wants people to be doing at this point. Anyway, it's late, I'm tired, I've gotta edit this and get it uploaded, um, we need to have a chat about doing future live streams because, well, it seems like some people would be interested in doing that, just kind of a hangout thing with me and you guys, and, you know, we can talk about EVs or whatever. Uh, also, the shirts that I mentioned earlier this week, yeah, those aren't done yet, so, you know, big surprise there. But I'm wearing one, so... Yay? As usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Again, there's a link in the description that will take you to the electric article with every single, you know, detailed piece of information you're going to want, or at least that we have so far. Uh, Elon did mention that possibly more information will come out this weekend, so keep an eye on his Twitter. And, uh, yep, that's it. I'll see you guys later.